Welcome to audio podcast four in the series of podcasts about London, Ontario's past. The one today is entitled London, Ontario, Two Iconic Department Stores in London's Past. We're very fortunate to have uh, these two, uh, Smallman and Ingram and Kings Mills. Uh, between the two of them, uh, there were many, many decades of uh, shopping available to Londoners. Kings Mills set the record. Uh, they were in business uh, from 1865 to 2014, some 149 years and in, in the same family. Um, Smallman and Ingram started in 1877 and closed in 1944, some 67 years. Now, both locations were well known in downtown London. The Smallman and Ingram store at the corner of Dundas and Richmond. Uh, when they closed, Simpsons took it over and then uh, the Bay. And then um, now it's uh, boarded up and unfortunately not being used by anybody, which is unfortunate because it was a, an illustrious history for that location and maybe someday it'll come back in some form. Uh, Kings Mills, a little better fate. Um, they were purchased by Manshaw College and uh, for their food services program and, and other and um, they renovated the, the location and it uh, looks very good. So the two um, were uh, certainly uh, destination places for Londoners and uh, the people loved shopping there. The the goods were, were high-end and very good, and uh, uh, so very popular stores. I start, I start off with Smallman and Ingram. I had talked to people who were both uh, shoppers there and employees and uh, learned some interesting things. One lady told me that Smallman and Ingram was a beautiful store. She said it was probably the most beautiful store in London. Um, she said they had floor walkers who were all dressed up in formal outfits, and that fits into society because people didn't go downtown without being dressed up. So arrive at the store and you'll find the uh, the uh, floor walkers uh, all dressed up as well. Uh, you could ask them for anything, she said. It was different from the stores now. And in front of each counter there were stools where you could sit and try on gloves or just about anything. Another lady said that Smallman and Ingram had a balcony and she said it was a me mezzanine where you could sit and watch people coming and going. But she said also it was a very popular spot where you could meet your friends. Uh, and they had a tea room up there, she said, which was really a relaxed place. Uh, so Smallman and Ingram was the store in downtown at that time and um, you could um, shop for just about anything. Um, everything was under glass, though. Gloves, scarves, handkerchiefs, you name it, it was all under glass, so you had to ask for it. Uh, one girl mentioned that she worked at Smallman in England when she was a teenager, and um, her job was to uh, receive money for, from the salesperson through a chute to uh, give the people change. She also wrapped parcels. She told me that one day she remembered leaning over a desk waiting for the change money to come back, and the uh, one of the owners came over and told her he did not want her leaning. It didn't look good. Uh, so the um, people there, you know, formality was important. You could order just about anything, like from a small spool of thread and up, and they would deliver it to your house. So um, it was um, very, very... Um, user-friendly, and that's the way it was in those days. Uh, it was, uh, people were there to, uh, to be served. Now, in um, Kings Mills, I, I find, found it interesting how the uh, internal structure stayed somewhat the same, the, uh, the ceilings of the original tin, and, and especially the elevator, which was still to the end being run by a live attendant who would take you up and down. That elevator is still there, apparently, and um, is, at the time, one of the more expensive and more uh, high-end elevators that uh, money could buy. Um, so here we are with two iconic uh, department stores, uh, just memories, and unfortunately, um, nothing there really in terms of department stores to take its place. Anything like that moved out to the... Um, suburbs to uh, the malls, Masonville Mall, then the Bay moved out there, and uh, uh, so nothing nothing too much to replace it. Maybe someday there will be another department store downtown somewhere. Um, 
So I am pleased that you're you're listening. Um, I've uh, actually done several uh, audio podcasts. I'd just like to tell you about them if you haven't listened to them. I've done three parts, and you would go to um, YouTube.com, um, Old Stuff Show, search the title, which could be Unusual Happenings in London's Past, Part 1, and then Part 2 and Part 3. Um, so I'm using the audio feed from my video channel, Old Stuff Show, to do that. So then another one would be um, the um, YouTube.com, Old Stuff Show, search the newspapers Londoners read over the years. And then this one today, of course, is, is the part four audio podcast. I've also done some just video without sound about London. Um, same thing, YouTube.com, Old Stuff Show, search, um, in this case, uh, London, Ontario, some important past Londoners, or London, Ontario's past landmarks on, ma on match covers. That's very interesting because you'll see some advertising of places you forgot about or some highlights of London, Ontario's past. So between the podcast audio and the podcast video, uh, you'll see lots of interesting things that you may not know about London, Ontario's past. In addition, I'd like to uh, inform you that uh, there's a Londoners Remember Part 3 book coming out. Uh, it should be in the, um, in the store by uh, October 1st, um, 2023. Uh, the exclusive right to this book is uh, the gift shop at Museum London. That's where you can buy the book. It's a different format from the first two. Um, it has uh, a variety of uh, very interesting um, combination of uh, information people have told me, my own memories, uh, lots of color, lots of photos, just a little, little different from other uh, books about London. So I um, hope that you would... Uh, Think about going down to uh, to look at it. It would be a great gift, and um, there's a limited supply. So thank you very much. I appreciate uh, you tuning in, and um, I hope that you will uh, make a point of uh, listening again or having a look at the videos. So thank you very much, and bye for now.